happy to bring your way the day two edition of our three-day webinar series on taking your SME business across borders. One of the ways that we help our SMEs at Keystone Bank is to build capacity. The advent of COVID-19 brought a new normal, and then it was necessary to transit from virtual to classroom. And that's why we're bringing you this webinar today, tag taking your SME business across borders. We started off yesterday with Dr. Osuji, who is a um, an associate professor of economics at the Pan Atlantic University. He was able to demystify the concept of after how we can leverage as SMEs the opportunities that exist in AFTA. AFTA, by the way, if you missed it yesterday, AFTA is an acronym for African Continental Free Trade Area. Trust me, that's a session that you do not want to um, lose sight of. That's a session that you don't want to miss. So for if for any reason you missed it yesterday, then um, it's good news because um, in no time we're going to be uploading the content of the webinar in its entirety in our, um, on our YouTube channel. So watch out for that today is going to be more like a sequel of the webinar series and then we're going to be taking you on um, you know the things that you need to do basically to um, what to engage in international trade things that you need to do to be able to access forex and all of that we'll get into that in a bit but yesterday when we talked about after we talked about the reason that um, GDP is, um, our GDP is low, the reason why balance of trade is in a deficit po um, position and all of that, that is one of the reasons that the Naira is plummeting, if you agree with me. One of the ways to improve the Naira is to, is to see that we, we, um, we move from being in a balance of trade deficit position to being in a balance of trade positive position in a surplus position. And what that means is that exports will not just be commensurate with imports, but exports would actually outweigh imports. And that's one of the things that we are trying to help you achieve as SMEs in Nigeria. One of the ways we want to do that is addressing the knowledge gap, because we have seen that one of the biggest constraints to seeing that um, balance of trade is in a um, positive position is knowledge gap. If SMEs are clueless as to what to do to position themselves in the global market, then we cannot expect to have balance of trade in a positive position. So one of the things that we want to achieve today is bring you knowledge, help you understand how you can position in that market. And then today we're going to be talking about how SMEs can access for it. You would agree with me that even though we've been on about leveraging the after opportunities, opportunities that exist within the free trade area, it's also important that we talk about how SMEs can access the Forex window. So today, we were going to be having someone talk about how the SMEs can access the SME Forex window, so to speak. What are the options? You know, those kind of questions. Um, the government has introduced uh, lots of intervention initiatives to help um, accessing Forex for international traders easy and seamless. And these are the kind of things these are the kind of lessons that you're going to be taking home today you know as we as we um go through this session with our dearest Som Tochi Okwadibo. I'll be reading out Som Tochi Okwadibo's profile in a bit and then afterwards she gets to dive right into the session and ask her a few questions about um you know how to even demystify the concept in the first place even me as a banker, some of these concepts are, are almost alien to me. They're almost, you know, they sound almost like um, rocket science. So apart from you, you guys are also be doing a lot of learning today from um, my colleague, Som Tochi. So I'll be reading out Som Tochi's um, profile, um, even as she uses her expertise to help us demystify the subject. So let's just listen to her profile very quickly. Som Tochi Okwadibo started her career as a customer service representative with Globalcom before she was convinced in 2017 that the switch to banking aligns with her purpose. She started off with both trade-related and generic branch tran transactions of billionaire cumulative worth before she rose to the position of a service manager owing to her outstanding performances. Somto, as she's fondly called for short, later joined the international operations team of Keystone Bank in 2019, where she has since focused on managing all the bank's trade-related solutions for customers. While managing existing trade offerings for the bank, Somto has been instrumental to creating new initiatives that have 
kept the bank relevant as far as international trade transactions are concerned. Despite Sumto's zest for bank operations and preoccupation with enormous daily trade deliverables, she ensured that personal development did not suffer at all. Sumto is a member of AMBA. AMBA, by the way, is an acronym for Association of MBAs, as she holds an MBA from the Distinguished University of Leicester, UK. As a strong believer in work-life balance, Sumto has been able to juggle her ambition and career pursuits with raising a decent family. Sumto is married and she's mother to three adorable daughters. With no further ado, let's welcome, let's make welcome our very own Sumto Chi Okua Digo. Sumto Chi, thank you for joining us. Thank you for making our time from your glaring busy schedule. I know you could have been in the middle of some trade transaction, for instance. You did be free to make our time for us and educate our MSME customers on how they can leverage the Forex window. So let me ask you, I know I know that when you talk about the Forex window, when you talk about importation and exportation, my layman understanding, for instance, is that for importation, you need the form M, you know, and then for exportation, you need the NXP form. You know, now I hear there's even a form Q, and all this concept, it sounds, you know, really huge. What's form Q? Why, why is it called? Q. Why, why not R? Why, why not G? So tell us, tell us, tell us about this. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much, Clement, for that wonderful introduction. Um, for from Q, well, I'm I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised as you have thought of it. Uh, why the name from Q? Why not from A? Why not from M or uh, from Z or from Y? But um, that's the acronym that CBN um, gave that product um, as it is, and that's what has been adapted by all banks. So thank you so much, Clement, again. And um, I want to appreciate everyone for joining us today in this session. I believe that we'll be able to learn so many things on this day about international trade operations. So without further ado, I would like to start up the trading. Um, so the option, the topic for today, we'll be looking at forex windows. What are the options for SMEs? I know one of the major challenges for SMEs will be uh, access to funds, especially access to funds, especially FX to cater for their financial obligations, uh, um, especially for customers who are into imports and. Um, one of the things we'll be talking about today will be um, how we can also support SMEs. We have accounts that can actually help with your small business, help ease all the issues and all the fees that come with opening accounts with bank. We have our Grobis accounts, which comes with uh, a very low fee. Then we also have access to loans such as access financing, school support loans, we have the CBN intervention funds. We also have academy where we, we have um, the option of learning and gaining more knowledge like doing yesterday. We have also, we also help trade digitally. We partner with Facebook and Google to provide information to our SMEs. And we also ease your registration services for your business name, because of course, for every import or export that you want to do in this country, you need to have a business name. So registering that business name can be can come with these challenges. So what Keystone Bank does is to help ease those challenges. So today we'll be looking at um, the local and inter international trade. We we'll also um, talk about import trade and payment methods that are available. We we'll focus more on um, export trade. The form Q, um, which is actually focused on SMEs, the foreign exchange sourcing, how we can actually get forex to help with our financial obligations, and then how we can leverage on this after a uh, trade platform. So. Before you start any business in Nigeria, you need to um, get a business name. You need to work out a name that would fit your business, set up websites, WhatsApp pages, blogs, as the case may be. You need to pick out a product that um, you, you have actually 
done your research on and you want to import or export, you need to find the right people to sell these products to or the right people to get these products from. Then um, for exports, you need to also find this, the people that would supply these goods to you. You need to do your KYC, we call it know your customer, you need to know the customer and you need to have a relationship with these suppliers so that they can trust you enough to bring the goods to you. Then there's what we call product pricing. You need to also check that the, at the end of the day, you would be able to make a margin from that business because of course we are in business for the money, we're in business for the profit because we are not a charity organization. Then find the customers to sell these products, ship products to these customers. There are different ways of doing this now. We can, we, we have people who don't, who don't even have an office who, do, um, who sell their goods virtually. But the most important thing is getting these products across to the buyers. And of course, we provide global customer and you, you have to also find a way to provide exceptional customer experience and customer service. So, talk about exports. Um, I want to know, are we, are we really ready to go global? If you want to go global on exports, there are different steps you need to take. You need to convince yourself that you are ready to take this step to export your goods. And for you to do that, you need to have an export plan. You need to, have, you need to itemize your plan on how you're going to source um, the products. Before you source the product, as I said before, you need to approach a reliable bank, an export-friendly bank like Keystone Bank, that would help ease the issues surrounding exports. You need to develop a plan on how you want to, or on what you want to export and how you want to go about it. You need to identify your, 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 the market where you're sourcing from. You need to identify where to get the products for these products you want to export. Are they available in the country? Are, they, are you allowed to export those products from the country? You need to, um, part of the plans would be to register with Nigerian Export Council. Nigerian Export Council is the, a body that handles all exports, export registration. So you need to register with them, obtain your export license, which is required when you're making your application, when you're initiating your application for export. You need to also identify the target market. Who are we going to sell these products to? Who are you exporting to? Which country will be able to take off, will be able to take off this product from you? Which country will be able to take your product off you? Who are the customers? Will they be able to pay? Once that is settled, you look at delivering your goods. How am I going to deliver the goods? There are different ways, different means of delivering goods. It can be by sea, can be by air, or by road. So, because um, you can deliver across border to, when you're moving goods from Nigeria to, let's say, Benin Republic, or that um, also export. So you can do that by road. You need to develop a strategy to, to export your products. How do you want to, how will you get your funds um, back? You can look at the payment methods like the letter of credit, the, the bills for collection or the advanced payment methods. If you're doing business, you, that's the financing part of your export. You, you need to also look at how you can get funds from your bank and then manage your sales and your exports. So let's look at international trade in details. Uh, what does international trade entail? When you talk about international trade, you're talking about carrying business, um, carrying out businesses or trades between two countries. It could be Nigeria and US. China is one of the export, major export countries. You have people bringing goods from China, people moving goods to other countries. So what that does is that it fosters international relationship between these countries and help countries to get access to resources 
which they do not have locally. It also helps to improve foreign exchange among countries. What is our role as a bank in this? Well, what we do basically is to liaise with what we call correspondent banks. Our correspondent banks are financial institutions in other countries, in another country, in a foreign country that helps carry out some of these cross-border transactions. So the ordering customer, which is our Keystone Bank customer, when it comes, approaches the bank and um, the, our, we, Keystone Bank, would liaise with our correspondent bank to get to the beneficiary bank. So it could be either sending documents, we could send documents through, through our correspondent bank to the beneficiary bank or send directly to the beneficiary bank or also help move funds to the beneficiary. So that is, we, we serve as like, a, um, we serve as the middleman between the buyer and the seller. That's what the bank does. So let's us um, go into import and um, um, export, import trade. The importer is the person who brings good into the country. Once you, we have people, some of us here, we go on, on um, Alibaba or Ali, AliExpress and we, we order goods and they send it to the country, either for personal use or for commercial use. If you've done that before, you're an importer. So once you bring goods into, from a foreign country into another country, you are referred to as importer. And for you to be able to do that, if you're bringing in commercial goods or CBN expects that every importer processes what we call an E form M. An E form M is actually a document that you present to your supplier when you're importing goods into the country. It's a global document, it's required from every importer. It's required from every importer when you want to bring in goods into the country. So for Nigeria, we have a, a, a window we call the single, we, we have a window, we have a window we call um, the single, uh, the Formen portal is, auto, is managed by CBN. And that window actually allows the importer to initiate Form M on that, on that portal. Once the Form M is initiated, the importer selects the authorized dealer bank of choice. The authorized dealer bank of choice reviews and then authorizes that request once all things are equal and all documents are provided are in line with all the submissions made on the single window portal. So the single window portal is also assessed by CBN, is assessed by um, customs as well. The Nigerian customs, they are the ones that actually register the form M before customer can use that for import. The form M ranges, the validity ranges from 360 to 720 days. And we, we can, and which can also be extended to additional six months, that's 180 days to one year being, that's 360 days. Like I said earlier, you must register the form M with the Nigerian custom before you initiate your import. The documents that we require for registering this form M include the pro forma invoice, which must be valid, we must have a six months validity. The insurance certificate, that, uh, that the local, in, we have, we use the local insurance company. We also accept the sound product certificate, which can actually be sent by the, the supplier or can be gotten locally from Standard Organization of Nigeria or NAVDAC, depending on the item of import. The Form M could be valid for FX. If it's valid for FX, that means you would need funds 
to pay for the goods. You would need to source FX through Central Bank of Nigeria to pay for the goods. If it's not valid, not valid for S FX, that means you would settle the payment yourself. So this will run through this. You obtain certificate, you obtain your form M. After the obtaining form M, for, for, after the goods have come in, we have what we call the sun, the sun cap certificate. The sun cap certificate is required when you have already imported the goods and you want to go ahead and process what we call pre-arrival assessment report for your imported goods. This comes after you, when you have imported the goods and you want to go ahead to clear. Once your pre-arrival assessment report, which you call PAR in short, is ready, you go ahead with clearance by the Nigerian custom duty after paying all the necessary import duties and then your goods are released to you. So this is just the process of importing goods into the, into the country. There are, also, there are items that we, we may not be able to register from M for except you get approval from CBN. There are about 43 items. We have them listed here. So these items, you, if you must import them, you must get approval from CBN. You must write to CBN through the bank for approval to import these items. And you must also be able to show in your account statements that you have enough funds to cover for the cost of the goods that you have on your PFI. What are the payment methods available for import trade? We have what we call the letter of credit which is actually a contractual agreement by the foreign bank, in this case now, the supplier bank, or, or our corresponding bank would have to commit to make payments to, to the exporter for the exporter to ship the goods. It's the letter of credit is actually designed to protect both the exporter and the importer. And we use this in cases where the parties involved, the buyer and the seller, are not, they, maybe they don't really know themselves too well, or um, they, they are just, they, there's no guarantee on that payment, or maybe due to some FX issues, the buyer, the supplier could request for a letter of credit from the from the, uh, from the seller could request for a letter of credit from the buyer just to ensure that payment for the, those goods are guaranteed as at when due. That is when you see customers going for letter of credit. Who are the parties involved in letter of the credit? We have the applicant. The applicant is our Keystone Bank customer. And the beneficiary is the supplier, the person that is that is going to send the goods to Nigeria, that is exporting from his country into our country. The issuing bank is Keystone Bank Customers Bank. Uh, it's Keystone Bank, that's our customers bank. We are the issuing bank. We are the ones that would open the letter of credit in favor of the beneficiary. The advising bank now is the bank that would advise the beneficiary of the letter of credit. And we have what we call the confirming bank. The confirming bank, under instruction of Keystone Bank, would commit to pay the beneficiary with the LC term. I know this might be, you know, a lot, but like Clement said earlier, would still will have room for questions where you need clarification. I will still send some of upload some of these on our YouTube page. Another. Mo payment mo um, met method is um, bills for collection. For bills of collection, they are usually, this comes up where customers um, know and trust each other. They can actually, you know, send um, the goods and the documents to our customer for maybe for the customer to pay in uh, at a later date. So this is like an advanced payment arrangement. So the, the value of the document from the purchaser by 
is handed over to the documents are handed over against payments or undertaking to pay at any time. So these bills for collection comes with what we call bill of exchange. That bill of exchange is actually um, it's it's actually dated. There will be like a future date on the on the bill of of, of payments on the bill of collection. Sorry, bill of exchange that is accepted by our customer by the buyer. So the bill of exchange indicates that the seller is actually indebted, or rather the buyer is actually indebted to the seller in this case. So the bank involved is just, what the bank does is just to collect the payments when it's available, and the bank does not guarantee payments for bills of collection. Um, so the method of payment, like like we said, we just summarized it here. We have cash or cash in advance. Cash in advance is like somebody, a customer would, the buyer, the seller would pay in advance before the the seller sends the goods. That's cash in advance, where payment is received before the goods are imported. We have letter of credit, which we have said before, which is a contractual agreement between the buyer and the seller, and we have documentary credit which is the bill for collection. Then open account is like an advance payment, pay at a later date, that's what open account means. For open accounts and bills for collection, documentary credit, it's most advent, the advantage is more on, is the, the importer enjoys the advantage because the importer can pay at a, a, future, a future date. Then for the exporter, the exporter would prefer the cash advance or the lot of credit because he, for cash advance, he already has his money at hand and for letter of credit, in some cases, the funds get there when upon presentation of shipping documents or he has a guarantee that that's money that the funds would, def would get to him. So let us look at the advantages of letter of credit and bills for collection. Let's put them side by side. When you talk of letter of credit, like I said earlier, it must be somebody, it must be somebody you do not know well, maybe someone you're not too familiar with, you do not really trust because when it comes to business, trust is very important. So where you really don't trust this person very well or there's no really relationship, you don't really know this person, it's just on a business level, you can go for letter of credit. The sellers are more comfortable with letter of credit because their payment is guaranteed. Letter of credit is also very useful where the country of the buyer's country, maybe where there are political or economic instability or there are issues with foreign exchange. Bills for collection is actually less expensive because there is no additional cost to it, except for normal bank charges but for letter of credit there there are some other costs that that come with it because you know we are using there's an intermediary bank like a correspondent bank that that helps settle these obligations so those banks also charge us and the more banks we add to the line the more cost uh, the customer has to bear most bills of, med, uh, bills of collection are used for parties that know each other very well and they do not anticipate any financial problems between them. So depending on how familiar you are with your, with your buyer or your supplier, depending on how, how you know this person, the relationship we have, you have with him, with the, with, the, with the customer, that would actually inform if your, your decisions on your payment method, if it's letter of credit or bills for collection. So we'll talk about capital importation. Capital importation um, is actually issued by the authorized dealer bank as evidence of investment. If you, you have a, 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 an investor who is not in Nigeria, who wants to send money to, to you as a loan or for equity, this is what the customer can, this is the the means the customer can use. You can send the inflow the funds to your account directly. You inform the, the bank and capital importation, we call it CCI, is actually booked for you. 
the essence of the importance of this CCI or the benefit of this CCI is that when the funds are due for repatriation, you can easily, you can get funds, you can source effects through CBN to repatriate the FX once they are matured. We'll go into invisible trade transactions. I'm sure some of us make um, school fees, pay school fees for, for our children of our work, for our work abroad. We pay for upkeep. We pay consultancy fee, medical fee, mortgage, Maybe you want to publish a book. This is where, this is the type of um, transaction that you would ask for from any bank. It is referred to as Form A. That is the, the most common name. So Form A falls under invisible transactions and they are used for payment of intangible goods and services. For export trade, Export trade, like we said earlier, is when you bring in goods into, from a foreign country into your, when you bring in, when you take goods from your country, from your country, Nigeria in this case, outside to another country. That is what we call exports. When goods are shipped from, from Nigeria, outside Nigeria, even if it's Bene Republic, Kotonou, it's called exports. For exports, we, when exports transaction is concluded, the, the, there is an exchange of effects between the two parties involved, the buyer and the seller. The effects comes into the country and into customers' accounts. So we, it, we, the country, we, we earn foreign currency from that transaction. There are three methods that CBN approved for exports. They are letter of credit used for collection and advanced payment. Because of the FX earnings, export in Nigeria is highly regulated by the Central Bank of Nigeria. There are items that we are not allowed to export. Most of these items, they are, they, they are already been imported in Nigeria or the we don't we we try to encourage local use here some of them are maize we have the timber whether it's rough whether it's sown whether it has been converted to charcoal we are not allowed to export them we have raw hides and skin once it falls within these harmonized codes we are not allowed to export these items Scrap metals as well. Unprocessed rubber, latex and rubber lumps are not allowed. Artifacts and antiques are not allowed. Wildlife animal classified as endangered species and their products are not allowed. So how do we process exports? For you to process exports, it's actually the Central Bank of Nigeria, they have made it very easy. And we are lucky to have Keystone as a very friendly exports bank. We, we use what we call trade monitoring system. Trade monitoring system is the portal used for processing all exports out of the country. As a matter of fact, recently CBN sent out a circular um, advising all shipping companies, airlines, to ensure that for every goods that are exported out of the country, that a form NXP, that is the form you generate after initiating your export, is attached to it. So the e form NXP is processed on, on the TRMS portal, that's the trade monitoring system portal. You can assess it from the comfort of your homes. If a customer wants to export, the customer it will be the one to initiate his requests from his office or from his home. The bank is not allowed. The bank does not have the, the menu, the profile to initiate um, exports for customer. Unlike Form M, if 
if you once all your documents are complete you can send to the bank and the bank would initiate for you though you can initiate it yourself but for nxp we don't have room to initiate transaction for customer so you have to obtain your tin your tax identification number from the firs office and activate that tin for nxp processing once that is done the nxp portal would ask for your tin which will generate all your details and you select the authorized dealer bank of choice keystone bank would see it immediately because as long as as soon as you submit those those the, the requests as soon as you submit all your requests it, we, it, we it prompts us we get a prompt in form of a mail and that is assessed within an hour this is the website for nxp processing for for customers then there's what we call the next fee once the process is done the bank reviews the documents uploaded against the against the input in the trms portal this is validated and forwarded to the pre the inspection agents that's uh, we have different inspection agents we have it on the slide we'll, we'll get to that so which we send to them the inspection agents for all exports so these agents do, they would conduct an assessment of all the goods that have that the customer wants to export and prompt the bank to to collect what we call the Nigerian Export Supervision Scheme fee. The next fee for non-oil products is about 0.5% and 0.12% for oil products. Once the fee is collected, the, the pre-arrival inspection agent would now would do the assessment and verify that customer has paid all these are done online we don't we once every stage of export processing the bank is alerted and the form is updated and our our files are also updated so we keep all these records both online and in file so these are the inspection agents that is approved by federal government we have the anglia international services that handle northwest and north central so if you're exporting from let's say Kano, you must select anglia international service as your inspection agent neroli technologies oversee southwest and south so if your port of departure or your port of loading or your your port of loading is let's say international airport mmia or a papa must sell, select narrowly technologies limited. If you're in Southeast, then you have to go for Gojo Pau Nigeria Link. These are the agents that would do the assessments of the goods, do the inspection, the custom agents, assess your goods before you can go ahead and export them. We have a sample of what NXP form looks like here. As I said earlier, these forms are also generated on that CRM portal. For, for export proceeds, export proceeds are the values, the monetary values of those goods of you have exported. Once the goods are received by the exporter, or in some cases before the goods are even sent out, in a case of in a case where payment is in advance, we have a uh, payment in advance, cash advance paid for an export. The inflow, the proceeds coming before customer <coughs> exports the goods, or it could be after the customer has, done, has exported the goods, but not later than 180 days for non-oil exports and 90 days for oil exports. These export proceeds are received into what we call export proceed accounts in Keystone Bank. Don't take the export proceeds into your domiciliary account. 
is received into what we call the export domiciliary account, which is reported to CBN because CBN, you, remember, you know, I, I told you earlier that all the export processes are done online. All the exports processing are done online. So once the um, exports are, once the, the customer has exported and the goods and the proceeds have come in, the bank acknowledges the proceeds and reports same to CBN and updates the same on the export account. We have customs on that portal. We have the PIAs, the inspection agents on that portal. We have the banks on that portal. And we also have CBN on that portal. So CBN gets the updates once the exports, once the proceeds have come into the bank because failure to re repatriate these proceeds could lead to delisting the importer from all segments of foreign exchange markets. So we implore all our export customers and intending export customers to take repatriation of export proceeds seriously. So how do we use these export proceeds? You can, if you're an exporter and you receive export proceeds and you have a trade eligible transaction, then you can use your proceeds to, to support those, um, those, to finance those, your transactions. You can also send, sell it to where you don't have any trade eligible transaction. You are obligated to sell it to the authorized dealer banks for only, and the authorized dealer banks will use this for only trade transactions. So let's look at the FM, uh, SME window, the Form Q. The Form Q was introduced by uh, CBN to cater for small and medium enterprises. Small and medium enterprises can have access to our Form Q. It's a special intervention by CBN to ensure that no matter how small your business is, you can still assess funds to pay for those goods. So who can access from Q? Like I said before, all SMEs have access to from Q. The from Qs come in every week. CBN gives us funds for from Q every week. And we and customer can access up to a maximum of $20,000 every quarter, every calendar quarter to effect payment to their suppliers. Unlike all those payments I mentioned earlier, like letter of credit, the bills for collection, Form Q is one product that requires the, the very minimum documentation. The documentation is very, very minimal. All you need for Form Q is your PFI, that's performer invoice, your form M. The form M, you know, when you registered the, the form M, when you were registering the form M, there was a PFI that was uploaded on that portal. So the same PFI is what you use for the form Q. I mentioned earlier that PFI is valid for six months, but for form Q, it does not matter. As long as it's the same PFI used to register the form M, the form M, the details on the form M must, or those, sorry, the, the Perform the details on the performer invoice must be the same on the form M for form Q, for your form Q request. So we effect these payments within, within 48 hours of what CBN gives us funds. And this is done every week. If you assess form Q in January, you won't be able to assess form Q again till maybe the next quarter beginning April. I mentioned earlier the documentation for Form Q, registered Form M, valid performer invoice with beneficiary and, and beneficiary customer details. Please note that your account must be at least six months before you can access Form Q. So, how do let's look at foreign exchange sourcing again? Foreign exchange sourcing, like I said before, we get foreign exchange from so many means, mostly from CBN. CBN is the major supplier of foreign exchange. 
in Nigeria, they give us for the supply, they, they allocate FX foreign exchange for letter of credit, for bills for collection, for form Q, for invisible trade transactions. For what the bank does is the bank would have to send a schedule to CDN after getting customer's request and compiling it. Customer must provide the Naira in their account. Customer must provide the Naira equivalent of the foreign exchange they want to source for the trade transaction. And once CBN allocates funds to the importer, the, the bank remits the same funds to the beneficiary that the importer provided. There are other means of certain effects. We have the CBN retail window. The CBN retail window, we actually use that window every fortnight, twice a, a month, every two weeks. We have lists of customers who have indicated interest to buy FX through this window. You must have a trade transaction for you to be able to assess FX from this window. When I mean a trade transaction, I mean a value for FX trade transaction. I mean, you must be a letter of credit or bills for collection. If you're doing from Q, if you have requested for from Q, you cannot go to retail for FX. We have the wholesale window as well. And then we have what we call the investor and exporter window, which is um, in short from IME. IME is where banks come together. When you, your proceeds for FX, your profit, proceeds for export come in, we sell it in the IME window. So these are the official sources for FX for import trade. Thank you. So I, I don't know, do we have any questions or comments or contributions? Do, do we have any, any question from anyone? Can you put down your questions in the comment section so we can pick it from there? All right, thank you very much, Somtochi, for that very insightful. Session. Thank you for breaking it down like I had um, Thank you for explaining all these concepts that were initially um big deals so to speak thank you for explaining the process thank you for uh, breaking it down for us Mike. all right so um i have a few questions here um a couple of participants the dialog box so just read out a few and um, some other questions where i feel that may constitute gray areas so to speak so you just speak to them um i'll start with this question from Oladimeji Akingade, he says, if one does export through an NXP, does one have freedom over the rate? Now, there's a second led to that question. He says, is it possible to use an offshore account for exporting? All right, so the first question is whether the exporter has freedom over the rates, um, the exchange rates. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I understand. The exchange rates, I, I think he's talking about the proceeds. If I'm yes, correct. The proceeds, yeah. So when the proceeds come in, if he has um, control over the pricing, over the rates, he would sell his money. Exactly. Okay. So the bank, um, the bank has a rate that we buy FX at. The our treasury department prices that rate, and is that rate? That rate is um, is is rate advised by CBN. CBN approved. So that's that's the rate we sell the proceeds for. Okay, so he wants to know, is it possible to use an offshore account for exporting? An offshore account for exporting? Yes, I'm not sure if I understand what that means. But. Well, I'm not sure I understand that, but I, for exports, for all exports, your proceeds must come into a Nigerian exports, exports domiciliary account. 
that export domiciliary accounts, why we have that account or why CBN advise all banks to have that account is for us to monitor inflow of proof from exports. So for every proceed that coming into uh, for an export that has been done through a bank, the bank needs to monitor. In some cases, if you're used to, if you're already exporting, you find out that some banks even send reminders to you telling you to bring certain documents and ensure you export. And once it's over 180 days, reminders are sent because report has to go out to CBN. And of course, like the, the policy says you would be blacklisted, you'll be taken out of all FX um, windows. So it's important that we take repatriation of proceeds very carefully. It cannot be done with a foreign, through a foreign bank you can send it through a foreign bank to us, but the proceeds must come into, into Nigeria, into your Nigerian export proceed account within 180 days for non-oil exports. Wow, thank you very much for that clarification. So yes, um, point to note, you have to be careful, tread with caution so that you don't get blacklisted. Um, you don't want to be seen as cutting corners. It's important for the health of your business. So let, let me ask you this uh, other questions. So I'd like to know, can we remit funds to a student studying abroad as upkeep? If so, um, what's the limit? Um, I mean, so if, if I'm going to, this is this bothers on English schools, yes. right? And I want to remit funds to a student who's abroad. It's not fee payment, Yes. but you know, upkeep. Just upkeep, yes. Um, CBN allows us to remit funds to students abroad for upkeep because you know upkeep is part of um, is part of the fees that uh, that or part of the allowances that you give a child at, and CBN actually makes uh, allowance for that for in Keystone Bank we remit upkeep to students every month they can assess upkeep on a monthly and the limits we have, this is just, this is Keystone Bank, not them. Um, we have $2,000, that's the maximum you can remit as, you can send to a child as upkeep or the equivalent in either Euro pounds or Canadian dollars or any other currency. Fantastic. So um, this is also a follow-up question on invisibles. Do high school, preschool students pass as beneficiaries for invisibles? We, 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 we remit funds to universities for degree and postgraduate courses or studies as per CBN guideline. For pre- what do you, secondary school, high school, yes, high school, and, and pre degree. Pre yeah. so CBN does not allow uh, use of invisible funds for such payments. Okay, yeah. all right. Thank you for, for clarifying that. So, what category of customers qualify to process invisibles? I was meaning to ask so does a savings account holder, for instance, just walk into a branch and say they want to process invisibles? Yes. Um, in Keystone Bank, we allow all, all variants of accounts. Any account, if you have, once you have an account with Keystone Bank, you can open an account in Keystone Bank and make your payments. In, in, it could be, once it's the savings account, the full savings account, not the quick, not our other variants, the normal savings, individual savings account. The corporate accounts, enterprise accounts, joint accounts, any account can um, can fund for invisible payments. Okay, great. Um, so let me read this question for, from Abdul Ghaniyu. He says, or he asks, I want to bring a vehicle from outside Nigeria and the payments will be processed by the bank. How can the bank help recover the fund when the supplier did not fulfill the promise? Um, is there a way the bank can only credit the supplier from abroad when the importer confirms the receipt of the goods, I mean, it's, this is. Can you read it? Can you take the question? So, so the the, the um, that's Abdul Ghani who wants to yes. know if he brings a vehicle from from outside, outside uh, Nigeria. Okay. And payment is processed via the bank, Keystone Bank, um, case in point. How can the bank help recover the fund 
in a case where the supplier did not fulfill the promise of payment. So the supplier didn't... Okay, so it depends if you want to bring in kind to Nigeria. Firstly, what payments, um, ag what the agreement with the, with the supplier? No, not the supplier, now the buyer. Is the buyer that is making the, the payments, right? Yeah. Uh, so is the buyer that is supposed to make payment for, for that car? So what is the agreement, the payment agreement? Is it letter of credit, okay. which of course will not, <laughs> might not depend on the model of the car and the type of car. Is it brand new? Okay. Some of these uh, markets, some of like the retail window, you can't, you can't use, uh, you can't bid on uh, finished goods. Mm. It has to be raw material. You understand? So a car, for instance, is a finished product, finished product. so it can't even go on retail bid. So what model, what method of payment is the method of payment that? Will now guarantee maybe if the bank can meddle can, yes can meddle or can come into it for bills for collection as i said earlier there's no the bank does not have any obligation it's between you and your because it's like an there's an there's a, a deferred payment like a deferred payment plan okay, okay you pay me at so so at a, a at a given maybe a future date you understand so it depends on on the on the payment arrangements but um one thing I know is that if there's any issue, the ICC, International Chamber of Commerce, can actually come up, but it depends on the nature of the agreements and because it has to be a, a, a trade transaction before any um, legal issue can 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 be taken. So, uh, Mr. Abdul Ghani, I hope uh, that does justice to your question. So, is it a trade? Transaction. That's the question here. What was the most? We talking LC, talking letters of credit. Those are the questions you want to have. In which case, if it's an LC, then um, the scenario you're painted doesn't apply because clearly a car is a finished product and does not qualify, you know, for LC. So this is another mm -hmm. question coming from um, Sim Abdul Ghani. He says. Well, he put a, um, um, a note here that he's talking from experience. So he wants to know the amount you have. He wants to know if the amount you have in your account determines your eligibility for your eligibility to, to access from Q, um, even after six months of opening. So is there are there caveats like that? Um, the if the amount you have in your account, your balance in the account determines your eligibility to access from Q. Right. That was yes, the question. Yes, yes, that was the question. Well, we don't know the poly no, we don't uh, but of course for but no, it does it does not really follow. But we want to make sure that because you know FX is very scarce, I want to make sure that the customers that assess this FX are customers that really do business with the bank. Mm -hmm. Yes, we want to make sure that this money is that the FX is available to, there is limited, we have limited allocation and we have a lot of demand for it. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that customers who have access are, custom, are Keystone customers, not customers that will just come for just that. Just that transaction. Just that transaction. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So we need to be sure that we have your business in the first yes. place. If there are limited it's, slots. It's not a, it's not a, 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 a determinant, it's not a, Okay. Okay. Great. Um, so this person, this is Pedro. He says, "Is there a required weight for products? So for non-oil exports and imports, is there is there a required? Are there weight specifications? Minimum weights, like minimum, yeah, like the quantity you can yes, export yes, or bring in. No, there is. Okay, so there isn't. Um, so long as you know is within shipping limits, I guess. Yes. It should pass. Um, well, this person. Okay. Yeah. So this person says uh, master, right? So it is good days. Forex available now for SMEs using from Q and what's the rates? So you want to know if Forex is available right now? For is from Q available right now? Yeah, from Q. Form Q is available, like I said earlier, it's available weekly and you can assess $20,000 every quarter. Mm, okay. The demand is high, yes. The um, allocation is limited, but is it available? It's available because okay. every week we yeah. still give our Form Q. Okay, fine. Rate is, I didn't answer that, but the rate okay, is yes, um, yes, yes. 412 
naira per dollar. Okay, so 412 naira per dollar. Thank you for for um, clarifying that. So this person wants to know how the bank can give a loan to purchase a car for transportation. Okay, I can speak to this. We have um, the MSME asset finance offering. You can leverage that as a customer, as um, an MSME customer of the bank to take a, a loan for the purchase of your car. All right, so in which case you don't need a collateral because clearly the car serves as a collateral and then you just need to make a down payment, what you call equity contribution, and then the differential is spread across a year, up to three years, as the case may be, you know. So yes, we have that offering for our MSME customers. You can purchase not even just a car, all that equipment that you need for the day-to-day -day running of your business. And then alongside other loan offerings that we have, believe me when I say that Kingston Bank is your one-stop bank when you're thinking MSME SME solutions generally. Um, let me see if there are any more questions that may be of interest. Um, so this person says, is the bank the only option the exporter has as um, a bank for his export proceeds? I'm not sure I understand this, but can he sell to other parties besides the bank? Does that question make sense to you? Um, so. Yes, it does. Um, you know, yes, you can sell if you have a trade eligible transaction. If let's say you have and you also import goods and you you are yet to pay for your goods, you have some FX obligations for your imported for your imports. Of course, you can use your export proceeds to settle that. Otherwise, the other option would be to sell to authorized dealer banks. So under what conditions can a farm care application not be processed? What, what are the things that tri trigger declination? Okay, we, de we can decline your farm queue requests if first, your account is not up to six months. Secondly, your form M, your item of imports does not qualify for, for farm queue. It's maybe among uh, 43 items that, CBN, that require CBN approval. For if you're already on a letter of credit line or if your payment method is letter of credit or bills for collection, but that can be taken care of because let the customers can change their minds, maybe because they want to have access to FX. So we can write to CBN to change your payment mode to not valid for FX. That way you can access Q. Then again, if um, your documentation is not complete, is not is not correct. If your documentation is incomplete, we may not be able to you may not be able to access from Q. All right. Um, questions are coming. I mean, that's proof that you had such an insightful question session, rather. So sorry about the numerous questions. All right, so this person, Chijo, is asking this question. I saw that he had sent it to the group and then also sent it to me privately so that okay. I ensure that I don't overlook it. So okay. he says, for the next fees, you mentioned oil and non-oil. For oil, you mean crude oil and its byproducts or granite oil, so you have been oil, et cetera. Thanks to, okay. to clarify here. Yeah. Okay, so for oil, we mean um, petroleum products. All right. Crude oil, PMS, you know, so that's what we, we mean. That's what we are talking, we're not talking about, you no. Know, if you want to export, um, if you want to export Nigerian produced products like oil, cooking oil, cooking oil outside the country. Of course, you're allowed. It's, it's, it's eligible for export. All right. Um, do Finnish goods qualify for farm Q? Yes, Finnish goods qualify for farm Q. Okay. Um, do you support export financing? What are types of LC can the bank fund? The bank can fund, um, if, if you're on a clean line, there's for clean line LC, that's confirmed LC. If you're on a clean line, yes, we'll be able to fund the LC for you. So what that means is that you you'll be on you have like a loan with a corresponding bank which you have to pay on, and then once your documents are presented and they comply with the LC terms, negotiation is done immediately. So that is the LC the bank can fund. Every other LC must maybe cash back. Even the confirm will also be cash back, but not dollar in this case. It could be Naira cash back. 
those will be cash back confirmed else. Yes. <laughs> All right. So who writes the letter of credit for SMEs? It's the bank that is the 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 bank that issues the issuing bank that gives the letter of credit that writes the letter of credit right, so they and the sends bank yes issues the letter that's yes. why they are called the issuing bank anyway. yes that's why they are called the issuing bank so they issue the letter of credit and sends it to the advising bank the advising bank would have to advise okay um let me scout for a few more questions. We have a few minutes to play with, so I want to make sure that we maximize it and people have um, responses to their inquiries. Okay. Um, however, if after this session, you, for some reason, you are not able to air your feedback, comments, or questions, you can send those to Keystone MSME Academy at keystonebankng.com. I take that again. Keystone MSME Academy at keystonebankng.com. Don't forget that the session is going to be hosted on our YouTube channel. So watch out for it so you can all, always, you know, do refresher trainings. You can always refer to it, to pick salient points, to pick guidelines that you need for those transactions. We're very interested in your scalability as a business. We're interested in seeing you grow. After all, in Keystone Bank, we grow together. It's been an interesting um, event. We had um, interesting faculty that agree as well. Three days and it's been so wonderful. It's been it's been a journey so far because yesterday we talked about after and how you can leverage the after opportunity, all the opportunities that exist in the continental free trade area. We had Prof and we had Dr. Suji come here and tell us the various ways we can leverage the platform. And then today we're talking we're talking about Farm M, Farm Q, NXP, and all of that. So I mean, it's important that once you gain the knowledge that you have to leverage that space. We are also equipped with what you need to do as a business, for instance, on uh, and, and the guidelines that you must follow for you to access um, Forex to be able to leverage that space. Now, you'd also agree that one important factor or one important, one salient element in the school of uh, trading internationally is concerned, is making sure that you have an international level, an international set brand right so if you're so the big question is do you even have a brand that has an international appeal you're looking to you're looking to um penetrate the international market are you do you have a they have a good brand appeal so tomorrow don't miss it tomorrow because we're going to be talking about how you can launch an international sme brand we're going to be having a subject matter expert gloria and inaya come and do justice to this you know having imbibed skills that you need to leverage the after opportunities having understood um, how to access the SME Forex window, then you must also make sure that you have um, an internationally sellable brand. Once again, thank you so much for making our time to be here. Um, such a valuable session, I must say. We do not take this privilege for granted. We want to say thank you. We wish you the best in your future and deals. And then we'll pray that you continue to make the bank proud and help our SMEs grow. Thank you everyone for dining in. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Like I said, it promises to be an interesting session as well. 10 p.m. same time, come here and learn how you can position to be an internationally sellable brand. Once again, thank you so much. I remain Clement Zewele, your host, and I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Have a great day ahead.